we need to optimize our self-care practice because how else are we going to get to know ourselves? How else are we going to learn what we need to do, be our best, to show up as our best, to define boundaries and keep people you know, where they need to be? How are we going to learn how to take back our time and do what we need to do for ourselves and fill our cups first? All of these things are what contribute to our ability to grow our self-esteem, to be more confident in the person that God made us to be. So I'm going to tap into that today. And I hope that's something that is going to provide you with encouragement because I have been on this journey for some time and I feel like I've got some pretty good footing in this area. Recently, I've asked myself why self-esteem is such an issue for women. We are smart. We are extremely talented. We're beautiful and complex creatures, right? So why do we see ourselves as something other than that? Why can't we see ourselves as the amazing, smart, extremely talented, beautiful, complex creatures that we are? Well, the conclusion that I came to was that we don't take time to truly know ourselves. We allow other people to tell us who we are. Think about it. We are children, so our parents tell us who we are. We are students, so our teachers tell us who we are or who we should be or how talented we are and why we should be that way. We're employees. So our employees give us guidelines and they tell us how we should be in order to get promotions and the things that we need to do to progress in our careers. We are wives. So we want to perform our best and be our best for our spouses. And sometimes we conform to their ideas of what best is. Then we're mothers and God knows those children will take us to places we've never been before, doing things that we've never done before. And we know that these things do not come with manuals. There isn't a manual about how to be a good mom or how to be a good wife or how to be a good friend because sometimes friends try to define find us as well. Everyone around us has some level of expectation and we feel women a lot of times obligated to meet those expectations, right? So I don't understand it, but I know that I wanted to find a solution to this because we do this without even considering what we need. And in most cases, we don't even know what it is that we need. So we don't know how to take advantage of it so that we can overcome these self-esteem issues in the first place. So the reason I came up with this whole thing, why we have self-esteem issues, demanded an answer. It demanded a reason for the problem. And I think I came up with not necessarily the answer, but I came up with the start <laughs> of one. And that is what this podcast is all about. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the CEO mindset podcast i'm andrea patrick your host and here we are constantly evolving and being open to failing forward because we know that it's in those failures that we grow there's opportunity for growth that we know and inform ourselves about what not to do the next time so that we can succeed or come closer to succeeding the next go round on our next attempt so here's what I think we need to do, the start of the answer to this problem. We need to optimize our self-care practice because how else are we gonna get to know ourselves? How else are we going to learn what we need to do, be our best, to show up as our best, to define boundaries and keep people you know, where they need to be? How are we gonna learn how to take back our time and do what we need to do for ourselves and fill our cups first? All of these things are what contribute to our our ability to grow our self-esteem, to be more confident in the person that God made us to be. So I'm going to tap into that today. And I hope that's something that is going to provide you with encouragement because I have been on this journey for some time and I feel like I've got some pretty good footing in this area. At least that's what people are telling me, child, because I hear all the time how people are like, how do you do that? Or how do you stay so positive? Or how do you get all those things done? Or how is it that you're this way or that? I don't know. But I think that what I'm about to share with you in today's podcast is going to be very helpful. So the first thing that I want you to do when it comes to optimizing your self-care practice is to unplug. 
And I know this is going to sound scary to a lot of people. And I want to help you with this because it does, it's not necessarily what you think it is, but well, it kind of is what you think it is. It means to unplug and how we're going to unplug is completely up to the individual person. I can't tell you how to unplug, but I can tell you that in order to unplug, you have got to do a tiny bit of preparation. You've got to make some preparations. And so one of the things that I do to unplug is go to a beach. I, I feel like I need to just kind of like detach myself from all the stress and overwhelm that I've got going on, whether it's my family, whether it's my business, whether it's my nonprofit, whether it's my ministry, whether it's my friendships, whatever it is, sometimes I just need to unplug. I just need to get my hands off of the things and get people off of me and just kind of find myself somewhere other than where I am. So before I can do that, I have to do a little bit of preparation in order to relax and enjoy myself, right? You don't want to unplug and then you get somewhere and you're like, crap, I've got all these things to do. So you can't even relax because you're so concerned about what has to be done when you get home. So here is where I do a little bit of preparation. So that might be because I have a business, because I do have a nonprofit, because I am in a ministry, there are certain things that I do to unplug, whether that's batching content to make sure that not only is there content going out while I've unplugged, but also that I'm not stressing myself out as soon as I get back into town or whatever it is I'm doing to plug myself back in. I'm not stressing myself out to create or be in creator mode, I can ease my way back in. So as a business owner, I do batch content and create content. That's one way that I prepare. Another way that I prepare if I'm not taking my entire family with me is I will meal prep child. I will make sure that while I'm gone, my family has something to eat or they have the fixings and the elements <laughs> of something to prepare. But I also set myself up for when I get back and I make sure that I've done some sort of a grocery shop, that there are things in the house. I know when I get home, again, I'm easing my way back into things. This is all a part of me unplugging, guys. So however you need to do this for your own sanity, that is what I suggest you do, is to do a level of preparation that not only prepares you to unplug but it prepares you for the re-entry and so that you have a smooth re-entry and you're not like really heightening your stress level as soon as you walk back in the house because honey when I tell you it is possible and it makes the unplug not even worth unplugging because of the stress that you know could potentially happen when you come back. So just do yourself a favor, give your future self some love and go ahead and make some preparations. Sometimes it's about childcare. Do you need to have someone to watch your children while your husband and you go away? Maybe it's a, an unplugged situation where you're better off with your spouse or you're better off with your girlfriends or whatever, but you have to take care of childcare. Make sure that those things are done. So it's just about preparing the way for you to have an experience that you can pour into yourself, you can fill your cup, you can get to know yourself. Sometimes the unplug is that you gotta go to some sort of therapy or you gotta, whatever it is, just make sure that you have prepared yourself for being gone. You have prepared yourself for the stay, wherever it is. So part of this unplugging and making preparations is what do you plan to do when you unplug? Have you set that up? so that whenever you get to that destination, it's ease, it's easy, it's relaxing, it's what you intended it to be. And then planning for the re-entry. So the first thing to optimize your self-care is to unplug, but in unplugging, make those preparations. The next thing is once you've unplugged, you've gotten where it is you need to go, have a process to recharge. I think this is so important because so many people, especially if your unplugging is to go on a vacation, a lot of people fill their vacation with so much stuff that they're no longer enjoying it, relaxing, filling their cup, they are just as stressed out trying to get to see all the things and do the things and, and do the this and the that and the thing that they are exhausted and they need a vacation from their vacation. So the next step here is to recharge, okay? 
if you're practicing self-care, if you wanna build your self-esteem here, again, it's about getting to know yourself, understanding what you need to be your best and do your best. So it's about unplugging, making those preparations so that the unplug is all that it needs to be and that you can recharge yourself while you're there. Now, what happens in the recharge? Here, you're going to slow start. You're going to take your time. If you're one of those people that is like hustle, bustle, hustle, bustle, hustle, bustle. My husband is one of those people that if he sits still, he's going to sleep because he moves he's like high energy um he's just i don't understand a child i need a slow start plan for the slow start during your recharge now if you like to vacation and go see all the sites that's great but don't be so quick to do it like take your time pace yourself get up in the morning take time for yourself read a book have a cup of coffee sit on the sofa go to the patio take in the sunrise take in the smells take in the sights from your balcony lay in the bed just for five or ten minutes longer than you normally would do that for yourself because that is going to really give you what you need to recharge and fill your cup. The next thing, I like to read. I like to find things that take me away. Not reading to learn or to grow, but reading to go into a fantasy land, to lose yourself in a book in the scenery, like embrace the smells of the book, like really get into it and understand it. That's another way that you can recharge. Then also you can recharge by just doing something you love. Okay, maybe your unplug is not to go away, it's not to take a vacation. Maybe your unplug is just to go in your room, shut the door, sit on your bed, and take a beat. I know for me, sometimes I truly enjoy going in my room, I get in my shower, I get a good shower, and I put my jammies on, and I just climb in my cold, crisp sheets, I turn the air down so that it's kind of cool, I can cuddle up under my blankets, and I'll watch YouTube videos. It's something that I enjoy doing, and it puts the stuff back in my cup. <laughs> it fills my cup back up, and I love it. Now that I've unplugged, or you've unplugged, and we've figured out what it is we're going to do to unplug, we've prepared for the unplug, and now you're there and you're recharging yourself. What do you need? Either you need a slow start, you need to read some things to lose yourself, maybe you just need to, whatever that thing is that you love, you found a way to do it. Okay, great. Now it's time to restore yourself mentally. What does that look like? Okay, well, make a list of your accomplishments. Okay, when you're sitting there, you've unplugged, you've recharged, now let's restore. Okay, let's restore ourselves and get ourselves prepared to re-enter wherever it is we unplugged from. What have we done for ourselves? How have we accomplished things and we can feel good about ourselves because we did that? You know, think about that before you go back into the chaos. Think about the mistakes that you possibly made and then let them go because they happen. We fail. That happens. We can't fear it. We can only learn from it. And everybody does it. That's the thing. It's like sometimes when we fail, we think that we're the only one on the planet that's ever failed. We are not. We're human. We are going to fail. We are going to make mistakes. It's okay. Are some failures bigger than others? Absolutely. Are some failures harder to come back from? Absolutely. But... We all fail, we all make mistakes, okay? So if you want to restore yourself mentally, accept these things. Not only the good things, not only the bad things, but the good things. Maybe you failed, but you also won in some way. So before you re-enter the chaos and you want to build your self-esteem, think about those amazing things that you've done and then throw away, get over, give yourself time to grieve the mistakes, but recognize that you're not the only one that makes them. Maybe you need to come up with a plan to overcome them while you are unplugged, but don't lament them. Don't let them drop drive you or prevent you from doing things or drive you to do things that you shouldn't do. The other thing that you can do here is if you're going to restore yourself mentally is step away from the scarcity mindset and start thinking in terms of a growth mindset. When you think that there isn't enough of something or you think that you don't have time to do something or you think that you've missed a boat, Rethink that, change the mindset, flip the script and say, okay, how can I grow? How can I use this area where I think there isn't an opportunity to grow and create an opportunity? Because there's always 
a way. There's always an option that is going to pull you up grow you in a way and it might be that your mindset is set on something and you see it as a failure but it really was something that you never should have been involved in in the first place so restore your mind restore yourself mentally get out of that scarcity mindset and move over to a growth mindset it doesn't have to be an abundance mindset you don't have to take that huge leap you can just go from scarcity to growth from growth to abundance But that's how you start to restore yourself in a mental way, like get your mind prepared. And when you do this, this is what is going to help you grow your self-esteem. Self-esteem comes from you feeling like you're not enough, feeling like you are having to manage everybody else's expectations. We talked about this a little bit ago. We have so many people telling us who we are and who we should be and why we can't be who we want to be. But if we take that information and go from that scarcity negative mindset and just think about how we can and grow. Even if the people are right and you at this moment can't do something, how can you grow into a space where you can? In this restorative space, that is where you're going to find that information that's going to help you with your self-esteem. That's going to build your confidence. So guys, if you want to optimize your self-care practice, first you got to unplug. Whatever that means for you, get out of the way. Just get out of where you are now, unplug, but be prepared so that you can re-enter safely and calmly. Once you get to that place where you're unplugging, recharge, have a slow start, read a book, do something you love. Then once you've done that and you filled your cup up a little bit, now restore your mind. Restore your mind by understanding that there are mistakes possibly that have been made, but you've also accomplished a whole bunch and you can stand on that and you can take a look at what it is that you have a scarcity mindset about and move yourself into a growth mindset. Start reading books that are going to help you. Start doing activities that make you feel good about yourself. Move away from people who are not helping you, but you know, providing you with a lot of negativity. Get away from those people. Move into a positive space. Start restoring those activities that make you feel good about yourself. That is how you begin to optimize your self-care practice. And again, this self-care practice is what is going to help you. It is gonna get you where you need to be in terms of knowing who you truly are, setting those appropriate boundaries, managing those expectations that people have about you. And then my personal favorite is teaching people how to treat you. That is what comes out of an optimized self-care care practice. So fill in your cup, get good rest, focus on the positivity. I personally check my diet because like your gut health is like your health health. So it's just a good idea. Practice gratitude. I am so grateful for the life I have. Even though I haven't gotten where I wanted to get in life, I love where I am. I think I'm exactly where I need to be. So I'm grateful for that. And that does it. I hope this was helpful to you because ladies, we are enough. We are awesome. We are smart. We are extremely talented. We are beautiful, complex, human beings. And so we should think of ourselves as that. And if you don't, if you are allowing other people to tell you who you are, stop it. Stop it right now. I want you to consider, look at your calendar right now and figure out a day right now that you can unplug. And I want you to start planning for that, making preparations, whatever those preparations need to be. Then I want you to go there and I want you to recharge yourself. Whatever that looks like for you, Whatever it is you need to do for yourself to fill your cup, I want you to do it. And then once you are operating on a full tank of self-love, I want you to then restore your mind. Restore your mind. Let those mistakes go. Build up yourself by listing those accomplishments that you have had. And then I want you to take yourself from a scarcity mindset to a growth mindset. And then I want you to create a plan that takes you from a growth mindset to an abundance mindset. All right, that does it. I hope that was a helpful podcast for you today. If you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. How are some ways that you restore your mind? Maybe I missed something. Maybe you got a great exercise that we can do. So share that with us. How do you restore your mind? If you're listening to the podcast, leave a comment and a review and tell me the same. How do you restore your mind? All right, guys, thanks for listening to today's episode of the CEO Mindset, where we are constantly evolving and being open to those failures because we know that it's in those failures that we find our success. 
we know what not to do next time. <laughs> All right. See you next week, guys. Bye.